Welcome to EdTech Hustle. My name is Rich. Today, I'm going to show you a new feature in Adobe Express. It's called Generative Fill. It's going to allow us to create or replace any parts of a photo. So let's go ahead and get started. So to begin, we are going to want to log into Adobe Express. You can set up a free account at express.adobe.com. So I'm here. This is the picture that I was able to upload for my presentation. What I'd like to do is use that brand new generative fill tool to add maybe an image in the background on the horizon here. So to do that, we just have to select generative fill. All you have to do is mark the area that you want to replace or the area where you want to create something. So I'm just going to kind of go around these people just like that. Now, what I found is that when you do this, you don't want to overwrite on any of your um, people here because it will take the area that you select and make the background a part of that. So I'm just going to get as close as I can without kind of touching or without, without running over these uh, these people who are in my photo because I don't want the background that I'm going to add here to, uh, to kind of overrun there. So I'm just going to kind of do this. Let's see how this works. Okay, so that's the area where I want to add something. And rather than there just being a blue sky there, I'm going to say the skyline of Miami, Florida. Now I'm going to select generate and we'll see what this feature in Adobe Express is able to replace that blue sky with. Okay, so as you can see on your screen, it gives you three different options. Here is the first one. Here is the second one. And here is the third option. Now go ahead and take a look closely on that man's nose. You can see why you just want to make sure if you the area that you select doesn't kind of overlap. So you can see that it kind of messed with his nose just a little bit. There is not so bad. But what I do like about this is you'll notice that when it puts that background in, it's able to tell that the background is out of focus. So this skyline of Miami, Florida, which is there inserted in the background where the horizon was, is also out of focus, which makes sense and makes for a more realistic photo. You'll also notice is that they just didn't put the skyline there. You can see it has some sort of trees in the background, as well as these boats in the water, which you would see if we were really looking at the Miami skyline. Now, if you don't like these results, we can scroll down. We can select load more, and now it's going to load three more choices for me. Okay, here are those choices. There's this one. There is this one. And that poor man, you can see that they're messing with his nose and now his hair. There's also this one, which kind of doesn't look terrible. I, I almost like this one. Now, I don't like this area around their hair, um, which doesn't quite look so good. But that may be something that you have to live with. Or you also have to recognize that maybe not every photo lends itself well for generative fill. So I'm going to select generative fill again, because now what I want to do is maybe replace what's in their hand. So this woman right over here, I'm going to replace these shoes. Let me just go ahead and type a bouquet of flowers. Now when I select generate, okay, we get three pretty decent choices. Now what I like about this is that the bouquet of flowers are positioned in a way where it does look like she's holding them rather than her holding the end of the flowers or I guess the top. It looks like she is holding the middle of the bouquet as she normally would if she were walking. All right, so here is another image that I'd like to use. I'm going to select generative fill and I'm going to choose this area right over here inside the grass in the outfield of this baseball field. So what I'm going to do now is use this prompt, a fat groundhog on its hind legs popping out of a hole in the grass. So let me go ahead and generate and we'll see what Adobe is able to come up with. Okay, so we have a few choices. Here is one fat groundhog. Here's another. And here is one more. So it looks pretty neat. Again, the detail on here is pretty cool because you can even see the shadow that Adobe Express was able to create. Now what I'm going to do is maybe take this area right over here 
And the prompt I'm going to use is a giant St. Bernard sleeping on the grass. Okay, so here is what we have. There is a St. Bernard sleeping on the grass. It is a little bit tough to tell. If you didn't know what this was, you might not be able to tell that that was a dog. So if you don't want this, we can just select this button and that will allow us to go back to our main page. If we want to use generative fill again, I can use it again and this time maybe try a little bit of a different prompt. Okay, this time, instead of specifying a St. Bernard, I just put a sleeping dog, and the results are much better. Again, you really have to appreciate the detail that Adobe puts into this tool. We've got our sleeping dog on the field right in front of the gopher. Just some really interesting ways that you can replace items inside here. So generative fill is a really fun tool. Again, it's not 100% perfect, but I think it is something to play around with. So for my last thing, I'm just going to highlight this area. Let's see if we can give our groundhog friend a little top hat. <laughs> and here are a few different results. I think I like this one. And I don't think I could end this video in a much better way than a little top hat on a gopher. So thank you so much for learning about generative fill, a feature that's available in Adobe Express. You can sign up at express.adobe.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment area below.